Hello, thank you everyone uh, for being here today. Thank you for anyone that's uh, listening to us right now, whether it be in their car, whether it be in their phone, in their iPod, iPad, um, or even on their um, laptop or computer at home. Thank you for everybody that actually takes the time to listen to, to us today. Thank you for anyone that has taken time out of their day that has that specific time uh, to be able to listen to the class. And we are very thankful for you, for your life, for everything that you are putting forward uh, to be able to learn so much from the Lord because we know he has uh, many things to teach us. We know that he has that he has much, much that he has so much to, to give to us and we just got to make sure we put our best effort to, to listen to him and to learn from him. And we know we have that opportunity many times throughout the day. And if you are taking that opportunity right now, thank you for taking that opportunity. Thank you for for um, putting that, that effort forth um, in this. And thank you, Brother Dennis, for uh, joining me and in, in leading and and giving these classes we know it's important for our youth members and i know having your sp your perspective brother and everything that you have gone through i know brings um, a lot of things forward so thank you brother god bless you god bless your family and your ministry as well um let's continue to to run the race as uh apostle paul said brother amen and also um youth also make sure that um you have your book in front of you today um, today we are on lesson 25 and we are going to be studying a genuine worship. We know that last week our brother Dennis um, was talking about the quest. Now we are going to a genuine worship. We're still on unit four. Worship, a source of power. And if you are with me, um, let's go ahead and make a quick prayer before we begin the class today. Thank you, God, for this uh, day that you have given us. Thank you for everything that has been at our, our disposal, God. Thank you because we know that you give us so many chances each and every day to learn from you, God. And I ask that today um, all of our youth members take that chance, God, to, to learn from you, to listen to the class that you have given us and be able to um, learn something from this and be able to change their daily lives, God, in their uh, following with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. Amen. All right, guys, go ahead and uh, read the scripture with me. We're going to start in Exodus 32, 15, and the word of God says, And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. The tablet were, were written on both sides, on the one side and on the other they were written. Now the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was, on, was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of people as they were shouting, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the noise of the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. So it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot, and the cast and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them on the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf which they had made, burned it on the fire, and ground it to the powder. And he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? So Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord become hot. You know the people that they were set on evil. So, main idea is music can be a means to approach God or a path to immorality and disobedience. And um, goal number one is tell between the music that pleases God and the one that displeases Him. Number two is define the intentions and the content of the music that is heard or sung. Number three is decide not to use music to worship and edify God, not to incite his wrath. And uh, memory verse, this um, is not one that we read, so it's a totally different one. This can be found on Ephesians 5.19. And it says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So in this Bible passage, we have a very, um, we have a, a very, uh, um, a very set event. Um, a part of history that was very important. Um, this was basically right when the Israelites came out of Egypt, and this was basically their first um, time that they were not under the ruling of Pharaoh or Egypt. Um, and this time they were actually under the ruling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, God was leading them, and um, Moses was in uh, on top of Mount Sinai, um, receiving the instructions from God. So, so at this time, um, Moses was not, um, with them at the moment. He was receiving those instructions from God. And, um, while Moses, which was the leader at this time was absent, it was 40 days and 40 nights. So it wasn't a day. It wasn't three days. It was quite a long time. 40 days is, um, more than a month. Um, Obviously, we know that a month has 30 to 31 days. So it was more than a month that um, the leader was basically absent from the camp. And um, while the this time was going on, um, Israel felt like they needed a, a, visi a visible uh, God that they could actually touch with their sense of, of touch, their sense of sight, um, probably even smell. Um but it was a time when they felt like they needed something else besides the invisible God that was feeding them, that brought them out of Egypt, the, the one that actually showed his power and they saw in action. Honestly, when we read this, we feel like that would have been enough. I mean, he split the Red Sea and let them cross on dry land. You would feel like that would be enough. But um, once, once sin... And, and once uh, frustration and 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 a uh, long time in waiting starts setting in, it can make someone make some bad decisions. And in this case, Israel felt like they needed a God that they could mold, that they could construct, and that they could see. And really, there are so much similarities between that and us. How many times do we want to mold God into what we want God to be like? How many times do we want the God that maybe lets us do what we want to do, um, a God that uh, doesn't make us go through forgiveness, because forgiveness can be something very difficult for some people, a God that we don't have to wait on his blessings, because many times God makes us wait for his blessings, or maybe even a God that we don't have to follow a... Um, where we don't have to follow the Ten Commandments. Obviously, as Christians, we can't no longer do what we want to do, but we have to follow the will of God and also His commandments. We can't go around and start stealing things at our job, not because we might lose our job. I mean, that is a possibility that you might lose it, but it should be more fearful that you're disobeying God, that that you're, you're dishonoring Him by stealing something. Um, or also committing, uh, lying about something. Um, and there's many other things that, that I could get into, but I'm not going to recite the Ten Commandments here and take longer. Let us actually go forward because the point here is what the people of Israel were doing. They were trying to mold a God that they wanted to worship, that they wanted to see, and that they wanted um, right then and there because they were tired of waiting. That's basically what the problem here was. So um, many people today in, in this world fall into um, fall into temptation because of the music that we have. Now we are going to be talking a little bit about music today and I know a lot of our students that are in the class are musicians. They're up in the altar um, playing instruments for Jesus Christ. But how powerful is music? Music is literally a universal language. If, if you show someone notes on a guitar, it doesn't matter if they speak French or Chinese or Spanish 
or Portuguese, it doesn't matter. When you show a note on a guitar to anyone, that note is a note and it's universal. Everybody can understand it. And that's why music connects us in a way that many times languages can't. Or obviously distances as well. We can't go and, and be with someone that's in Brazil because they're in Brazil. Either they would have to come here or we would have to go there. And there's all these other thing, uh, circumstances that we can talk about. But let's not go there. Let's not get off topic. But <clears throat> it is literally a universal language. That's what music is. It connects all of us together. And also, what is the reason why you're listening to the music that you're listening to? Are you listening to that type of music because it makes you feel good? Are you listening to that music because maybe you want to look cool while you're driving around in your vehicle? Or are you listening to that music because it's the song that all your peers like? Or are you listening to that song and playing it in your car or your room because you want to exalt God? Because you want to remember who God is and you need something to help you to lift up your spirit? If yes is your answer to the question that I just asked, then congratulations, you're using music in the best way possible, which is to which is to cry out to the presence of the Lord. And sometimes he comes down and gives his presence because someone is exalting him. God does not actually communicate with someone that isn't paying attention to him in any sort of way. We need to know that God makes sure that he goes to whoever is crying out to him, whether it's in prayer or music, which is what we're talking about today, or even reading his word and meditating in his word. That's where God goes to. Now, when someone is listening to a song that isn't to praise his name, and that listener is someone that should be listening to music to to glorify God, then that angers the Lord and it calls on his wrath. Because these people, the people of Israel, they were the chosen people of God. This was his nation, and this nation was disobeying him by making an idol, making music, singing and dancing to an idol. So it called on the wrath of the Lord at this time. So we have to make sure we also know the intentions of the music that we're listening to, not just the type of music that we're listening to, um, to be able to know if we're praising God with what we're doing or not. Now, if you use, um, if you use rock that's Christian to maybe pump, get pumped up at the gym, then that's, that's fine because you're, you're trying to just exercise for some time. But always make sure that it's not worldly music that you're listening to. Even if it is um, to do something like maybe getting exercise. Or if it's something to maybe learn an instrument how to play it in a different way. Just make sure you don't use secular music. Because secular music brings um, a channel of something different other than God. If you listen to an instrumental that is uh, from church or from someone that's actually Christian, then they probably got the inspiration for those music notes from God. And they maybe even prayed about it and tried to work on it so people will be able to have something to listen to. But if you use secular music, um, even if it's instrumental, and maybe they might not say bad words, but at the same time, what are these people channeling if they're secular artists and all they're, all they're doing is trying to please the world and please their listeners? So that's something you got to think about um, because a lot of people had questions about this when I was younger. Why can't we listen to secular music if there's no bad words and if they're not bringing a bad message in that song that they might be singing? 
But the thing is, is not just the lyrics, it's not just the sound or music, it's also the intentions behind it that have to count a lot as well. So that's something for us to think about. And we're going to go ahead and move on to point number one, is lack of faith leads to disobedience. So, so lack of faith produces despair. Um, today's story relates to the moment when God calls Moses to, clown, to climb to Mount Sinai to reveal his commandments to him. So in this part, we know that Moses took a very long time. He took 40 days and 40 nights. We know that isn't a, a small waiting time. So in that, in, when we have to wait, when God doesn't give us a blessing right away, when we need a job that pays very well, or we maybe need a, um, uh, a car, or we need to be able to find a home or an apartment to live in because we're now going to be going on to college or living on our own, whatever the case might be in, in your situation. Um, and God doesn't give us the response right away. We have to know that we have to obey God even if he responds or doesn't respond right away. Even when God responds uh, later and doesn't give you your answer immediately, he has a reason for it. And even though we might not know the reason right away or we might not know it uh, later on, maybe we might not know it at all. We have to have that faith. We have to have the that faith that he's doing it for a reason. And the reason why he's doing it is a very good reason as well. So that is why we have to have patience and we also have to wait on his time and not our time so we can't have that disorientation because God is taking his time with something we have to know that he's doing it for a purpose that he's doing it for a purpose so we have to practice our patience we have to practice waiting on God's time always whenever it is time for him to respond with anything that's going on in our lives. Um, so despair leads to sinful acts. If we get desperate in our, in our waiting, we know that we can make many mistakes in the way that we act. Um, the people of Israel were waiting. They became frustrated. They, they were despaired. And then came the acts of sinfulness. The act of sinfulness that the people of Israel did here was actually molding this God, this golden calf, um, to be able to worship them, that idol, um, and actually be able to have a God that they can see, that they can that they can feel. Um, so they got tired of um, worshiping a faceless God, um, even though God has. Uh, we're supposed to get to know him day by day and have a relationship with him. Um, they probably got tired of having a God that we can't exactly see with our carnal eyes. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, if we can't see God and we don't want to worship him because we can't see him, then how are we so different from somebody that's, um, for somebody that's, uh, uh, um, an atheist, sorry, I almost, the word was slipping away from my mind, but an atheist person only praises and only believes in something that he can touch or feel or see. And if we just trust in our senses, our human senses, then the, the way that God works is not going to make a whole lot of sense to us. And it's going to be very hard for us to keep our faith that way. Because many times we have to get out of our of our explanation or our theories or human theories, things that make sense with when we use our mind and our intelligence, because that's not the way that God works. He works supernaturally and we have to we have to be able to know that and actually trust in him just by us actually having faith, not the other way around, not by what we see or what we feel. So that was the um, 
the lack of faith that led to the disobedience here with the people of Israel. And point two is disobedience leads to immorality. So a celebration of metal gods. So when the people of Israel were captured in the land of Egypt and they were slaves, um, we all know that the gods of Egypt that they worshipped at that time there was a whole lot of them. Um, Egypt had a very, um, had a culture that worshipped many gods. Uh, whether it was the god of the moon, the god of the sun, uh, they even believed in the afterlife and, and mummification of their, um, of their ancestors once they uh, passed away. So we know that they had many gods that they worshipped and Israel saw this they were amongst those people for many years and they did see that they were worshiping these other gods and that was probably what they were seeing many for month, for a whole lot of time so when they came up to the camp and you know their leader was missing for a long time because he there were he was in the mountain receiving the instructions um so now they made this golden calf and then Moses became angry and he broke the tablets on the mount of the foot of the mountain. So this is what the anger of the Lord was to the people of Israel because here it says Jealousy for holiness brings about indignation when you listen to music that is not worshiping God, but other gods. One of the things that brought the wrath of God among the people of Israel was the fact that they were worshiping something else. God is jealous by nature. He does not want you for anybody else but himself. So... When you start straying away and you start worshiping something else, something else becomes more important. You're missing church because you have a job that you have to go to. You're missing church because you're tired. You're missing church because you want to go on vacation, because you want to be with your friends. Or you're just not paying attention to God because there's so many more important things going on in your life. When you have that problem, that brings upon the wrath of the Lord and it brings it in a very terrible way. So we have to be careful to not replace God with something else. Because this is exactly what the people of Israel did. We might not be creating a golden calf. And praising it and worshiping it and singing songs to it. But many times we can let our life take first priority instead of God. So we do not want the wrath of God for worshiping something else. That is the worst, most terrible decision you can make. Um, actually doing something like that. A celebration of the desires of the flesh. When, when we have these carnal desires, when we want to listen to worldly music because we think it, it sounds so cool or, or it's so much catchier than Christian music, when we just think it's cooler to hang around with their friends than, than listening to God's word or going to church. When we want to work and make money um, instead of going to church on Sunday because we just we really want more money to either buy more stuff or just have more money in the bank. This is the stuff that feeds our flesh. So it, it feeds something that's a desire for us, but it, it feeds our carnal thoughts. And we cannot have these desires filling up our flesh because when, because then we're not able going, we're not able going, we're not going to be able to have time to feed our spirit. And our spirit has many different needs than our flesh. We go to church and we praise God because our spirit is uplifted when we're praising our creator. We read God's word to have direction and it helps our spirit feel strong and stand firm in what it needs to believe in. So that is the reason why we do these things. 
We do not do it to feed our flesh, but to uplift our spirit. Um, point number three is immorality, immorality incites the wrath of God. A form of selfish celebration. So even though Israel saw the power of God, when they saw the plagues that came upon Egypt, and they also saw how God responded in every single one of those plagues, even though they saw the Red Sea split in two and they walked across on dry land, and even though they knew that God had their interest in mind, their best interest, they saw water coming from the rock when they were in the desert and they drank from it to be able to, to, be able to stay cool during the time that they were in the desert. So, um, the people of Israel were familiar with those gods that they saw in Egypt. And when they molded these gods that they, that they could worship, they liked that because they could actually build them from their own hand. They did not have to wait on anything else. They only had to get to work, provide the materials, and do the labor to actually produce this, produce the want, the gods that they wanted. So, like I said, today we might not be worshiping a god that's made of gold or anything of that nature, but we have to make sure that we keep our thoughts on God, that we keep His obedience on top priority, not what we want, not what we can produce. And point B is the absence of God leads to immorality. So it is possible that we have allowed foreign images in our minds that hinder our worship to God. Many times we can actually be listening to something on the radio or on the commercials of TV, if we're watching sports or whatever the case might be, um, can lead us to have our thoughts on something else other than God. And that is something that um, takes a lot of discipline to actually do throughout the day. Make sure you constantly keep your mind on the things of God rather than um, the, your thoughts on something else. And it's going to take some time to develop that discipline. But we can start today. Start by listening to the classes on your way to work. Start by listening to music that assaults in the name of the Lord while you're on your way to school. Or even while you're working, if you have the possibility of listening to something, uh, putting um, your headphone in your ear and even listening to the, to the Bible, it's a great way to execute some time to have your mind on the Lord and not your mind on the job itself or other things. Um, of course, you have to work efficiently, but not just keep your mind only on the job at hand. Um, a lot of the jobs that are out there, there comes a point in time where we're kind of automatic at it. We're pretty good at it that um, we can kind of do it with our eyes closed. And that is when maybe you can practice having an earpiece in your ear, if it allows you, not every job allows you to do that, and being able to have your mind on God even though your hands are doing something else. So music has always been an instrument to encourage many celebrations. Um, and also the world uses it for its own goals as well to create their own celebrations. So the circumstances, the desire, and the reason why we are getting, why we need music is a very important point to think about when we're listening, when we're trying to find God's presence throughout the day. Many of us that are in this class, I know we have about, if I'm not mistaken, three or four musicians right now. So people that are musicians, and even if you don't play at the church, if, if, you are interested in maybe um, learning about an instrument later on um, in your in your life. Maybe once you get to to um, uh, high school, if, if you're not in high school yet and you're a younger listener listening to me, um, music is something that can open up many doors for you. It can open up the doors of not having your mind set on God and not worshiping Him, or it can have the power to actually. Um, have your mind set more on him just by using that talent that you have, your understanding of music. 
And music is something that is all over the world right now. So it's something that a lot of people are interested in. So ask yourself, what is your favorite song? Is it biblical? Is it appropriate? Do you need to renovate it? And we should be careful not to get dragged by the favorite things of the world. So if you're listening to these questions right now, listen to them one more time and actually ask yourself, what is your favorite music? Is it biblical? Um, sorry. What is your favorite music? Is it biblical? Is it appropriate? Do you need to renovate it? If you are asking these questions and your favorite song is some music, some worldly artist, try to re reevaluate your priorities and where you stand with this because it's very important that we do something that worships God not something that sets his wrath because I believe nobody in this world wants the wrath of God let us pray for the class thank you God for this class that you have given us thank you for allowing us to know that we need to focus on things that worship your name God not things that bring up your wrath let us understand God that we need to listen to your commandments. We need to listen to your teachings, God. And we need to be filled with you, God, and for every day that we go to school, for every time that we go to our job, God. Let us get filled with you, God, with your presence. And let us also continue on the rightful path, God. A lot of us may be struggling, God, but I know that if there's somebody praying with me right now, God, it's because they are willing, God, to take on that challenge, God, to be different, to not follow the world God if it's a a young person an older person or even a younger person that's maybe not an adolescent right now or a youth um, please prepare them God for the world that they are going to face please help God the older listeners God uh, the adults God to to put their bet foot put to put their best effort forward God even for their children and if there's a youth member listening God allow them God to please continue the good fight God even though they're young, even though there might be a whole lot of other things going on around the world, God, let their, let their stand be firm in you and always with you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you guys for listening to us. Thank you for being here today. Um, I pray that all of you have a great night. And I also invite you to the next class with our brother Dennis. And let us finish out this book. Um, we're almost to the finish line. And then we will move on to the next one. Thank you, guys. God bless.